We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life, and resurrection, through whom we are saved and delivered. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brother, and let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself, went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant we pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generation shall celebrate with the pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. 
To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I receive from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything in his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper, took off his gar outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What am I do what I am doing? You do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not certain why, but my favorite feast in the church would be Holy Thursday, the evening mass of the Lord's Supper. And why is that? Because I remember as a kid coming to St. Teresa Church, coming to St. Teresa School, I remember as a kid, when I was young, my least favorite thing to do on the planet was to come to Sunday Mass. And I remember every Sunday, my mom, and my grandmother would take me here to St. Teresa every Sunday to Mass in Italian, or we come to what was then the 10 o'clock Mass. And every Sunday, I, I gave my mom a little bit of a hard time. And she always used to say to me, Richard, we're Catholic. You're going to Mass, that's it. And I'd come every Sunday, and I never enjoyed coming. One year, my mom, my grandma, my sister, my family, we came to the Holy Thursday Mass. I don't know why we came on Holy Thursday, it was in the night. And I remember sitting in the front row of the church, and that was another strange thing, because normally we sat toward the back. There wasn't enough room in the church back then that when we came for Holy Thursday, the only seat left were seats that were in the front of the church, actually right here in front of the altar of St. Joseph. The choir area wasn't there in those days. And I remember there was a priest here who wanted me to become an altar boy. And the last thing I wanted to do was become an altar boy because I didn't like going to church. And I remember that Thursday night when I was in fifth grade. I never paid so much attention to the Mass in my life. Actually, I was in fourth. And I remember thinking to myself, you know what? 
Maybe I will become an altar boy. I don't know. I was enthralled with everything that went on. The Mass was beautiful. And I know that at that moment, God was doing something incredible in me. And I became an altar boy, and that's when I started to really love this church and really love Mass. And many of you remember Father Grippo, and he was here when I was a kid. I grew up with him when he first got here. And I remember serving Mass as an altar boy for him. And oddly enough, I would become a deacon with Father Derevin at St. Helena's. I remember that night because I think the power of that Mass changed my life and helped me to become a better Christian man and ultimately helped me to realize my vocation to the priesthood. And boys and girls, that's what we remember today on Holy Thursday. We remember the institution of the Eucharist, which no matter what anybody says to us, the Eucharist is the greatest gift that we have as Catholics. And also we remember the institution of the priesthood. Maybe some of you boy, young boys are being called to the priesthood, how we need good priests, like Father Darabin, like Father Joseph, like Father Gomez, like our Salesian priest, like Father Belli, like Father Grippo. We need good priests to serve those in need. But we always remember the gifts that God has given us. You boys and girls, many of you, and some of you are preparing for it, have the gift to receive the Eucharist every single Sunday. The churches are now open, and it's good, as Cardinal Dolan says, to receive Jesus. I know there's a little sign from the St. Teresa Church here that Father Derriman put up. Come home for Easter. Come home for Holy Week. It's safe. And actually, it's good. We are so blessed every day if we want, to experience Jesus Christ in a very personal and intimate way. We want to take advantage of that at all times. Because when we come to the Mass, when we come to receive the Eucharist, God gives us a glimpse of heaven. Every time we come to Mass and we participate here live in the church, God brings us to himself. And we're reunited with all the angels, all the saints, all the dead. They're all there. And we're given the strength to continue on our journey. You know, things have been hard this past year. And last year at Holy Thursday, we had to celebrate Mass privately. Now it's public. If you can, come to the Mass tonight at 7 30 here at St. Teresa. I remember coming to one of those Masses, and that changed my life as a young man. Maybe the Lord is waiting to change one of your lives as well. And to really have that beautiful, intimate loving relationship with all of you. And again, we remember during this Holy Week, Jesus' obedience to the plan of God. And we remember that everything Jesus did was for our salvation. Jesus gives us everything. He doesn't hold back. He didn't hold back when he was comfortable. He didn't hold back when he was uncomfortable. Jesus gives us everything everything. What do we give him? Do we give him everything? Are we trying to be closer to him? Are we trying to allow him to change our lives? Because he does it. And today, we remember how powerful the Mass is. The most powerful prayer we have as Catholics is the celebration of the Mass. As Cardinal Dolores says, and I know Father Derevin says, Come home. Come back to the Mass. The time has come. And also today, boys and girls, I'm sure Father Derevin would mind on the altar here. I'm using Father Derevin's chalice. And I remember that chalice when I was 15 years old when I first met him. And we remember all the good and holy priests that worked so hard giving themselves up to, to Jesus. That's what a priest does. A priest has to every day work to imitate more Jesus Christ. That means we got to suffer, we got to serve joyfully, because what's our job? What's our vocation? What's our calling? To help you get to heaven. And what a joy that is, I know for myself and for all the priests here at St. Teresa, knowing Father Derevin, I know what a joy that is for him. A priest who loves the Mass. I think he'd celebrate 10 Masses a day if he could. Who loves confession to relieve people of their sins. Remember, boys and girls, how important the gift of the Mass is. Come home to your church to receive the Eucharist. 
It is the most powerful gift that God has given us. It's the closest we can be to Jesus when he literally enters into us to transform us from the inside out. And for some young men in our school, I remember when I was in St. Teresa's school in seventh grade, when Father Grippo inspired me to become a priest, maybe some of you have been called to the priesthood. It's an awesome life. We've had many good priests come from this parish, and we have many good priests that have come to serve this parish. Think about the priesthood. It's a wonderful life of service if God is calling you to it. And always remember, Jesus doesn't want to be part of your life. Jesus doesn't want to be the center of your life. Jesus wants to be your life. May God be with you all. God bless you. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He is, who, for He is the true and eternal Priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels and thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts be prayed by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew of gold, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered, entered willingly into the passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you forth the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, and not worthy. You shall enter into my room. And only say the word of my soul shall be healed. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood. 
said the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God that just as we are renewed by the suffer of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Boys and girls, I spoke to Father Derevin and all the priests here. They all wish you a very happy Holy Week. Hopefully we'll see you in the church. It is safe to come back to Mass, especially for these Holy Day services. Your church, St. Teresa, is a huge church. You will be fine, even my family. They come to St. Teresa. They're going to be here on Easter Sunday uh, as well. So come back to Mass. Come back for Easter. It's safe. It's secure. And we need the Eucharist. We need Jesus. So even if you come back to Mass tonight, come. You get to receive Jesus. The greatest gift we've ever received. The Lord be with you. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Lord, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.